Hey, what's going on guys? Kenan here, hanging out. Family's just chilling by the pond and uh, you'll notice I got the Mata Mata out. Oh, here he is. Oh boy, it's a nice male Mata Mata. And um, this guy's been living in the back pond just over there for maybe two and a half years now and he's been doing well. But uh, he's gonna go to a new home. My buddy Chad is gonna be taking him and setting him up at his house. And I thought it would be a good idea to get him out now because as we know, uh, that pond is gonna become an area for crocodiles. And Chad had expressed an interest in housing this guy. Uh, he loves gator snappers and other ambush predator turtles. And the Mata Mata is definitely one of those. So what we're gonna do today is we're gonna spend a little time with my little buddy, who my friend Shannon says I look so much like, but I don't know if I look like him with the beard. What do you think? Nah, now the beard kind of ruins it, although I do look like I have leaves and seaweed growing off my face so that when I do hang out in the water, much like this guy, uh, I blend. I blend in. That's what they say. But for now, let's spend a little time, kind of the last, the last time we're going to spend with our Mata Mata for a while. Right, guy? He's always smiling. All right, we're going to put him in and I'm going to go underwater with him. All right, we're gonna go on them. But I should also uh, point out that Kate mentioned she saw a pink belly side neck in here. So I've got to get in and look for that guy as well. So we're gonna do two things. We're gonna visit, oh, he seems to have gone. We gotta now find the Mata Mata. We're gonna enjoy the pond. We're gonna look at the Mata Mata and we're also gonna look for a side neck. All right, here we go. It's been a little while since I brought you folks for a little underwater excursion. As you can see, the cichlids are doing awesome. I love how they've adapted and colonized this aquascape pond. But where is that little turtle? Aha! There's our little buddy. It's amazing how fast he can disappear in this pond. I gotta tell you, I spent a good amount of time peering through the different hiding spots looking for him. I don't mind though because it gives me a chance to check up on the other species. It's so cool to see this guy underwater and just really enjoying himself. I love to kind of peer into their almost mysterious ways, if you will. These guys are never seen on the surface, so it's cool to get them in clear water where we can actually see just how they walk along the bottom. Remember, these guys aren't very good swimmers, so they just kind of want to clamber about on the bottom and blend in. When I found him in the other pond, he was really uh, just underneath uh, the mud and just kind of enjoying that little mud bath, which I've mentioned so many times, creates something of a micro habitat, which is really good for their skin as well. A lot of turtles enjoy kind of getting in that mud. Now let's see what he's up to. This is really cool because it's a bunch of papyrus and the leaves, actually the roots have just grown so much that it's become a really cool habitat for baby fish and possibly a turtle looking to stay away from me. But like I said, I enjoy this because I get to check up on some of the other animals that are living in the pond and see how things are kind of adapting and growing here. And one thing that got me super excited was the fact that my little frontosa aren't so little anymore. Do you guys remember when I put these in the pond? Well, they're definitely doing well and they've made it through this long winter we had last year. And here's one of them now in the cave. Such a beautiful species of African cichlid. And that hump on the head is really gonna become more and more pronounced. So there were three just hanging out, but I actually have seven and I've counted all seven this summer long. So it's been really cool to know that all of them have made it and hopefully they'll continue to make it and we are gonna have some big, massive frontosa. That will be awesome. The white koi are doing well as well. As well. They're doing good also. <laughs> 
Oh, it's so much fun just to kind of swim through the pond. Like I said, I haven't brought you guys in here in a while, so I love doing this. I hope you're enjoying it as well. Go through the cave, see what's happening in the nursery. I like this area because it's where a lot of baby fish tend to congregate. But as you can see, there's a lot of algae on the ground here that I need to vacuum out. I did a cleaning of the wetland and all the algae kind of piled up on this lily's roots. So I'm going to have to suck that out so that this grass will continue to grow. All right, a little maintenance in my future, it turns out. That's why it's so important to get in and interact with your exhibits, with your environments, because you see what needs attention. Where is this turtle? What's crazy is how fast he disappeared and also <laughs> how fast or how hard it's going to be to find another turtle in here without being lucky. Oh well. We definitely got to find the Mata Mata again. Ah, finally, there he is from out of the depths. <laughs> little guy was kind of making me nervous. Uh, it would have been hard to have a show about a turtle if there wasn't a turtle in the video. But look how bizarre he is. Even next to these rocks, he has some good blending abilities. You can see how swimming isn't the main mode of movement for this guy. He just likes to kind of chill out, get a bearing of his environment, and then if he likes a certain spot, he'll just kind of hang out, wait for a fish to swim by and suck him on up through that massive mouth he's got. And this is what I was talking about. They basically just walk along the bottom. So it's very important if you guys decide to keep one of these turtles you're gonna wanna set up your enclosure to where they have very easy places to climb up and out. I've actually seen these guys drown in tubs that were too deep and had too steep of walls. So it's very, very important to make sure you got a lot of logs, a lot of branches and rocks that he can easily climb up on. This pond is five and a half foot deep, but as you'll see, this guy is able to climb up these walls with those sharp claws on his fingers there, on his toes, and he'll be able to get up and take a breath. So it's very important, guys. In the meantime, let's just hope none of those cichlids get too close to this turtle. I'll tell you one thing I need to do. I need to start holding my breath longer again. This guy can hold his breath for about an hour as long as he's not moving too much. And that's very advantageous if you're an ambush predator that hunts in the water. Me, on the other hand, man, the longest I've been able to hold my breath lately is only a minute. I need to get that up there so I can relax and just spend a little bit more time underwater. And here is exactly proving what I was talking about. This guy can climb up really nice and easy on these limestone coral rocks that we have here in this pond. I just love seeing him interact with the pond. And I gotta be honest, a little bittersweet as well knowing that this might be the last time I see this guy in a very, very long time. He's got a really good-looking clump of moss or algae growing on his carapace right there. So, uh, he's got some good stees. I like that style, dude. He's got more hair than I do. But I love this. How's this for a smile, guys? The craziest looking face on the Mata Mata. Permanent Grim. Grim? No, permanent grin. How about Permagrin? Kind of like what I get when I'm watching this guy under the water. You'll also notice every once in a while he'll take a small little 
amount of water into his mouth. He's actually able to diffuse some oxygen through the water in the linings and capillaries of his throat. He's also sucking in water so he can get a scent. His nose does work underwater. So that's pretty cool adaptation as well. These guys can get oxygen through their cloacas and through the linings of their, their mouth as long as they're not moving too much. And clearly, this guy is definitely proving the old Aesop's fable adage, slow and steady, the Mata Mata goes in his underwater abode. And check this out, guys. This guy hasn't swam once, but he doesn't mind doing a little underwater base jumping. Right now, this is a totally new spot as he hits the ground, clunk. But um, if I left him in here for a while, what would happen is he'd just look for the best places that he can hide and still get a breath of air, but also have a lot of access and traffic by some of the fish. These guys are very effective ambush predators, as I've mentioned before, and he's been doing extremely well in that back pond. There's plenty of little brim and other fish in there for him. So like I said, guys, kind of a bittersweet video, just something I had to do one more time with this amazing species of bizarre turtle, the Mata Mata. It also means in their natural land, Kill Kill, the Kill Kill Turtle. Oh, it's so awesome to see this animal. A little clumsy there, but you gotta hand it to him. Not so bad for a guy that really doesn't swim too well. One more time up this sheer cliff wall here. Look at that. There's some swimming with a little help from the rocks. But keep an eye on this nose. It's time for him to take a breath of air and he's able to do it in the most cryptic of ways. Remember, he doesn't want to be seen by anything because even though he's a predator, he could become prey as well. So secrets are very important and living a secretive life is one of the ways the Mata Mata ensures his survival. Just look at that nose. Perfect as he's in. He picked the perfect spot through all this dollar grass. And there it is. You'd never know that the Mata Mata was just under the surface. All right, well guys, what a cool experience. I hope I don't have any bats in the cave. I never know when I come out of the water. So if I get a booger, I apologize. But you know what? Really cool to spend time with this guy. I love him, uh, but I'm just so glad that my buddy Chad's gonna take him. And he, he said that when he's, you know, he'll never sell it, he'll give it back to me uh, when the time is right but it's basically a very long-term uh, breeding loan. And if he wants to keep him the rest of his life, that's fine. As long as he's happy and well cared for and adored. I figured it's an animal that should be enjoyed. Like I said, Chad's built a really nice, large enclosure, uh, beautiful tub, planted, filtered. Uh, these guys love high pH and uh, that's what they're gonna get here. So thank you so much for being a good turtle. And I'm glad you're uh, still smiling. <laughs> you're going to love Chad. And uh, guys, thanks so much for watching. Pretty relaxing watch this guy kind of move about the pond. Didn't find any signs of the other turtle, though. So uh, I'll have to keep an eye out for that guy. You never know. Uh, you never know what will happen here at Camp Kennan. All right, everyone, thanks so much for subscribing and watching the channel. I uh, can't say thank you enough. Tom and I are both extremely pleased 
Uh, the channel's doing really well and it's because of you guys. So thank you so much and I hope you enjoyed this video with the world's arguably most bizarre turtle, the Mata Mata. See you later. <laughs> See you guys.